Let's knit a yummy watermelon wedge knit snuggle sack by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to another Yarnspirations tutorial. I'm your host, Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Let's get started. To download your pattern, click on the link in the description below. In today's tutorial, you'll need a super bulky number six weight yarn. We're using Bernat Blanket Brights for contrast A, race car red. For contrast B, go, go green. In Bernat Blanket, contrast C is color coal. In Bernat Baby Blanket, contrast D, lemon lime, contrast E, white. Let's knit up this delicious looking watermelon wedge knit snuggle sack. You can make it in child or adult size or even a small little baby size, which I'll show you today. We are working with Bernat Blanket Brights, Bernat Blanket, and Bernat Baby Blanket. They are all a super bulky number six. And we've got contrast A for race car red, which will be the main body of this slice of watermelon. Go Go Green, which is this outside color of the green, the darker one. The contrast C, which is coal, are the little seeds on our watermelon today. And then we also have lemon lime in the baby blanket family and that's that little thin edge before you get to that harder outer core of your watermelon. And then in color white, that's that little white part of that rind that you don't want to eat into. <laughs> but it's better than getting in that green and, and lemony lime color, right? All right, so we're going to get started on looking at the abbreviations here. These are um, generally the same abbreviations that you've seen before. This is an easy pattern. You're going to need to know how to knit. And we are going to knit in front and back, which is a form of increasing. We are also going to be decreasing with a K2 tog or knit two together. We'll also be passing a slip stitch over, working on that. We'll be slipping one stitch knit wise, and we'll also be doing another type of decrease, which is a slip slip knit and uh, working on the right and wrong side of the fabric. Now this is worked um, as two different sides and then sewn up the, um, the sides. You're gonna make the same on the front and back, seam it up along the sides, and then these little seeds are gonna be added later. That's just a quick overview of this pattern. Now you're going to want to look at the measurements. You'll pick either the child size or adult and I'll also give you some notes if you wanna make a super small one for a baby or a little doll and it gives you all the sizes that you need and the gauge. We're gonna jump right into this and I will be referring to these directions off camera, but know that you need to go ahead and download that pattern. So I'll see you in a moment when you get all your supplies. Be sure and grab a US size 11 or eight millimeter circular needle. I'm using a 29 inch cord. Actually today I'm gonna to use a longer one, but all you need is a 29 inch cord or the size to obtain your gauge. All right, I'll see you in just a moment. Our instructions say front and back make two pieces alike so we're going to work on the front first which is the same thing as the back. We're going to cast on with A which is our red. Make a slip knot. Make it however you are comfortable with. I'm going to put it right on my needle with that tail in the front here. I'm going to grab my yarn here and split that. Scoop up where my thumb is, down where the finger is, down where the thumb is, let go with that thumb and kind of pull that up so it's nice and even. Turn it around here, we're gonna start on the first row. The first row is a right side row and we're going to knit that first stitch in the front and back of the loop. So just like you would insert it in the front of this stitch here. And for a slower video on the knit stitch, of course, check out my other uh, videos. Uh, you can check on the playlist down in the link below or on our blog site. I'm going to wrap around just like a knit stitch and then instead of letting it fall off, once we pull this through, we're going to flip over to the back side here Okay, bring our needle all the way around to the back of this loop. See this loop here? Put that stitch right in here, like that. And then we're going to knit that stitch. Okay, so now you have two stitches over here and let this one go. Okay, now this is gonna flip around this little cord for your uh, circular needle if you're not used to it. Right now it's flipping around more because it's I'm on a table, but uh, you this will get filled up with more stitches, I promise you. It's going to increase a lot. So the next one, we're gonna do that two times. So we're gonna knit in front and back. 
of the second stitch, same thing, knit, don't drop it off, just twist right around, and we're gonna put our needle in the back of this stitch, okay? And then we just wrap around, let's get that right in there, wrap around and knit that first stitch here in the back, and now we have one, two, three, four stitches on here where we had two before. We're gonna flip that around, and we're gonna work on the wrong side, which is to purl. So we go into the front of this stitch here, wrap our yarn around, and we're gonna push that through to the back of that loop here. All right, let's do that again slower. So go around into the front of this stitch here, the front leg of this stitch, wrap around. So we do a purl. We're gonna push that through to make a new loop and then let this one fall off. So we're gonna continue purling for this row all the way across. So we still have four stitches. We're not changing the number. Okay, now we're gonna to flip to the other side. We're back on a right side row and we're going to knit across. Okay, we're just uh, lengthening those stitches that we did before. So um, making, uh, making one more row, a knit row, no increases. Okay, so I've knit across and now I'm gonna take it all along to the back and we're going to purl this row. Same thing as before, just push that on through and be sure and pause your video as you need. I'm going a little fast. Okay. Or a lot fast. If I'm going a lot fast, that's all right too. Just push that pause button and rewind if you need to. Okay, I am starting on the fifth row. All right, so we are going to knit in front of the back. This is an increased stitch on the very beginning. So knit here, wrap around to the back, pick that stitch up and knit. Okay, let that fall off. Now we're going to knit to the last stitch just as normal. One, two, and it doesn't really matter what the count is because we'll end up doing the same thing uh, later on. There's that last stitch, and so we're gonna knit, swing that around to the back, and then we're going to knit into the back of that stitch and let that go. Now you should have six stitches on your needles, okay? And so now you're starting to see that little point happen, okay? So this is the bottom of our watermelon. Flip that over to the back, and now we're just gonna reinforce that line in a, uh, so that it has a stockinette on the front, which is all knit stitches on the front. So we're going to purl. And this is row six, just purl. Okay, pause your video as you need. I'll meet you back at the end of the sixth row. Okay, I finished the sixth row and now I'm on seven. But now we're not really counting which rows we're doing, we're counting uh, how often we'd make the increase. So we're gonna be repeating rows three through six until you get to the measurement you need for the size you're looking for. So the rows, row three would be to knit. So every time you get on the right side here, you're going to be reinforcing that with the uh, the stocking net, so you're knitting in the front. Okay, and then when we get to the back or the wrong side, we are going to purl because we need to reinforce that. So I'm just repeating it one more time for you, and then we'll talk about how long you need to knit for the different sizes we have. So this is row four. Okay, and then you have your increase row, which is the fifth row. So every other right side row is going to be an increase row. So we know that the last time we did a right side row, it was knit, so now we're going to increase. So we just knit that first stitch, rotate to the back, and then increase with knit in the back loop, 
and then we just knit across until we have one stitch left. So now I've, um, I'm not really having to count here because I have already the, the number that I need. I just know that I need to increase on the first and the last stitch. So that last stitch again, we're going to knit it, rotate to the back, go here and knit in the back of that loop. It twists that stitch, okay? And now you have an increase. Now you're just gonna go onto the back and finish that up, that row six, um, with, knit, uh, with purling on the back. When you go to the right side again, then you just reinforce that increase. So it's the same thing that we did before and you're gonna continue growing it. So basically every four rows, there's an increase, or if you wanna think about it as every other right side row, you're increasing. And so you just reinforce it when you're on the back, you only purl. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring the pattern right back out and show you how long to knit till. So you will need a uh, measuring device. You will, you will need your measuring tape, okay? So we are at this part here where it says repeat third through sixth rows until work from beginning measures approximately 50 inches for the child size and 70 inches for the adult size. Um, if you need the centimeters, they're here as well. Now, if you want to make the smallest one, the very like a baby size or a um, doll size, I'm knitting to 15 inches, so uh, you're going to be significantly smaller, and you'll see why later on, but your sizes for the child will be in this red color, which is 50, and the adult, which is 70 here. Of course, mine is 15. So I will meet you back up, and you end on a wrong side row, and we are going to join our first color. See you in a moment. Okay, so you have measured it. You wanna make sure when you measure to go to the tip of your triangle, start at the zero, measure up until you get your either 15 inches like mine or your uh, 50 inches for child or the 70 for adult. Uh, set that aside and I have ended on a wrong side row, which means I'm, I'm at the end here. And then when I turn it over, I'm gonna be on the right side and this is where I'm going to add in my next yarn. My next yarn is this white yarn. It's the only one that's the smaller ball. All the other ones are those larger, bigger balls of Bernat blanket yarn. Okay, so the easiest thing to do in joining color is actually just to lay the yarn towards the back. Now, I like to grab my old yarn and my new yarn and put them together and just kind of hold on to them and it helps keep it this stitch nice and firm uh, while I'm working with it. Okay, so I'm going to take my new yarn and just wrap around that needle and knit. That's all I do. So I just simply come along and add my second color. And all I need to do for color E is knit six rows in the garter stitch. I don't need to do anything else but do that. And uh, so every time we're on a wrong side row, we are going to be uh, purling and we're on a, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, we're on the wrong side row, we're just gonna be knitting. Uh, we were purling on the back and now, now it's pretty simple. You don't have to do any purling now. So just go ahead and knit across. Now on the child size, you're going to knit across and do six rows. On the adult side, you're going to do the same thing. Now, if you're doing the smaller one like I am, you're going to do four rows. So only four rows of the white yarn for the baby or doll size and six rows for the adult and the child size. Continue knitting along in your new color. And later on, I'll show you how to weave in those ends. So no worries on how to get that uh, to look nice and pristine in the end. All right, keep going and I'll see you when you have finished with contrast E and you're ready to join contrast D. See you soon. Okay, you've finished your four rows or your six, depending on if you have the child or your adult. So I've got four on my baby or doll, uh, six for the adult and six for a child of the white. And now I wanna add on the same amount of rows for my green, this light green color here. This is the lemon lime. So I'm gonna hold it in the back. I can put my old yarn right behind so I can grab on both of them at the same time. Go ahead and knit just as we did before. 
knitting across and just leave that old yarn uh, still okay so you are going to drop it off after you've knit the first couple of stitches just let that drop off and uh, if you notice here on the back you can see where the color change happens and you're not going to see that because it's on the wrong side and when they get all stitched up it's going to uh, be masked these uh, stitches here when you come back on that second row knitting it might be a little loose so what you can do is you can just take these and just pull them tighter or you can tie a lot a nice a nice um, loose knot there and uh, continue going on and then as I said before we are going to weave those in as we go and uh, so go ahead and make the same amount of uh, um, same amount of rows that you did in the white and I'll meet you up and we'll add on the go go green color or which is the contrast B so we just finished uh, starting to add on D continue on color D and meet you back in a moment all right, so we have worked with these two colors, the white and the lemon lime, and now we want to add in the go-go green. This is your contrast B. Do it just as you've done before, laying that on the back. Put the old with it to make it nice and taut for that first few stitches, and go ahead and knit. You're doing the same thing, except we're actually going to be knitting more this time and reinforcing that nice, thick, rind that's on the end of your watermelon so if you notice we have not been increasing this is just going to go straight up from here and this part is going to be much longer so and you're going to be working with 30 rows for the go go green on the child size and adult if you want to make it with the uh, the smaller the smallest one in a baby size uh, or doll size then i'm going to be working with 14 rows so quite a significant uh, less amount of rows again it's going to be uh, 30 rows be sure and have your pattern next to you so that you know uh, how many to knit for all that and then when we meet back up I'll have all these green on here and we will bind off together all right I'll meet you back in a little bit pause your video and I'll see you soon All right, so we're ready to bind off, and so all we do, and or your pattern says cast off, it's the same thing. All we do is knit the first two stitches here. So we're gonna work this stitch, one and two. Okay, and then so we're gonna take that first stitch that we worked over, slip it over the second one. Okay, that is one cast off stitch. And do that again, knit the next stitch, so you have two on there, lift the back loop over the front loop, and then that's it. So you're going to get this little line across and keep going until you have your last two stitches on there, and then you'll just pull out that last loop, and I'll show you what I mean here at the end of this row. So pause your video, and I'll meet you back when you are ready. See you soon. Okay, I'm down to the last two stitches. This last one gets knit. Knit the front stitch over the last one. And then we're just gonna pull that out, get our scissors here, and cut a tail. You can pull that other one out. Okay, so now your tails are ready to be woven in. You're going to weave this side in, and then you have all of these other tails over here. Now these can prove a little bit more finicky because you've only got a few um, rounds on them, or a few rows on them. So uh, this is how you're gonna work, weaving in your tails. So you're gonna need your wide-eyed tapestry needle. And I'm gonna start with the one that is uh, the last one that was on there. See how these are kind of loose? You want to um, lock that in right there. So I'm going to work it up through here and get my needle going in through this ridge up top. Just put that on there. Okay. And so I'm not going to tighten this up too hard, too much, but I am going to make sure it's kind of tightened instead of just super loose okay so and i'm going to take this yarn here and go around uh, through this bump here okay and so now it's imitating more of these stitches around here so now i can just kind of take this up and weave it back and forth 
uh, around the stitches. I'm going to go up through this bump here. Oops, and that happens when if it's a little short like mine is, then you'll have a little less room. Now, because this is going to be hidden on the inside of our work, we don't have to be very pretty about it. Uh, but basically, I'm going around how these bumps uh, zig zag in and out and uh, if you can't tell what they're doing it's okay this yarn is really forgiving so uh, you just want to weave these into the back of these loops back here and uh, get it nice and locked in and it's not going to be showing on the front of your work and then actually I can just leave that one here and then we'll just take it and snip that off and then go on to your next one. So this is the one that needs to get locked in, uh, this one right here. And so I'm gonna go up this direction or I can go down this direction and uh, get that one in there nice. And you'll, you'll see uh, in a minute, I'm gonna show you an example of the second one that I made. So let's see, let's get this in through this stitch here. Let's see, this one's going to go here. All right, I'm gonna just going to go up through this one. Okay, so I'm not going back through any other loop I already had. And then we'll just go on down to the same color that it's with. I'm going to go down through here and around. And then go back up. We're going to kind of zig around. I'm going to go back and forth between these stitches. And so I'm going to take like yarn and go around like yarn. It's easier to see around these edge stitches where they're joined to see where you should go around. So you're going to continue doing that and get all the stitches in. And let me just jump over to the next one. So it looks like this. And then now it's going to look like this. So this is the same one. And I've already woven in all the stitches. You can see them back here, and it's going to be hidden. So you want to make two of these. You want to make a front and a back. When you have made these and woven in your ends, you can leave you can leave a little tip in here. That's fine. So go ahead and make two, and I will see you in a moment, and we'll make all the little seeds, and we'll sew up the sides. See you soon. Okay, let's make the seeds. So we're going to make them all the same and we'll make a different quantity for each one you need. And you can see them laid out on the pattern. They are right here on the second page and you can see them inside these different ones. This is the adult one and then this is the child. You're gonna make 10 for this one and 15 for this one. And for the very small one, you only need six. So let's go ahead and make the seeds. They all look the same. We are gonna use C, which which is the coal color or black. We're gonna cast on five stitches and I'll lead you through all of the rows here. Okay, you're gonna start by making your slip knot. I'm gonna give a little bit of a uh, tail for those five stitches there. Go ahead and place that on your needle. Now this is a, a double pointed needle. It's the same needle as the uh, circular that you've been using. It's, it's okay, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So you're going to make your, um, your long tail cast on here or whichever one you're comfortable with and go up through that thumb down through the finger down through the thumb and pull it keep going until you have five this is three four and five okay and now we're going to uh, on the right side is knit one so make sure you're not using your tail. Use that working tail here from the ball. Knit one stitch. And then we're going to increase. So we're going to knit one in the front, move it to the back, and knit it in the back. That's that twisted stitch that goes in the back. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to knit one again, and then knit front and back again. So there's that increase, knit it, swing it to the back, knit it in the back of that stitch, okay? And let that drop off and you have one stitch left and you're gonna knit that stitch. So we started with five and we just added two more. So that makes seven stitches on your needles. Turn it over 
and on the second row and the all the other alternate rows you're going to be purling so we're going to make a stock and net stitch on the right side okay so go ahead and purl this row pause your video as you need we're going to go through all the rows together on here Is a little harder to see it on this darker yarn but I'm gonna walk you through all of it okay now this is the third row we're going to knit two one two three and then we're going to knit front and back knit the front part swing it to the back and knit that part and then we're going to knit one okay and then we're going to knit front and back same as before okay and then knit these last two stitches whoops i dropped that two three four five six seven okay knit those last two one because we increased it with those two knit front and back so we have nine stitches on our knitting turn that over and again you're going to purl this wrong side go ahead and do that again pause your video as you need it Okay, we're on the fifth row, and this is where we're going to start decreasing. Now, when you were doing the increase, there is a trick on the knit front and back. You, for just the seeds only, not on the main pattern, but if you wanted to knit front and back and just put your needle in the back loop and then let it slip over without actually knitting but keeping it on there, then uh, it does actually work uh, well. Um, it's not necessary on this um, so I can show you that step one more time here and then we'll uh, take it off so let, let's just say this is a knit stitch knit in front of the back so we're going to knit in front of the back this first stitch so we, I knit I swing it to the back and I can pick this stitch up and then instead of knitting it I can actually just slip it and leave that stitch on here so I have made an increase that's if I wanted to do it in that more simple way Okay, so that was on all the increase rows. Now we're going to decrease our seed and we're going to go back down to seven stitches from the nine. So we're going to knit this first stitch here and then we're going to um, SSK, which is slip, slip, knit. So we slip this first stitch knit wise, slip the second stitch knit wise, and then we're going to put our left needle into the front of these two stitches. Okay, so now it's positioned where we're in the back of these stitches and we're going to make a twisted stitch just like the knit in front and back except we've got two of them together. And so now we've taken those two stitches down to one stitch. So there's the one stitch and now we're going to knit three. So knit one, two, three. All right, and so now we're going to make a right leaning decrease. That last one, uh, that last one was a left leaning decrease. So we're going to knit these two stitches here together. So put your needle in both of them and knit them as normal, but you're knitting them together, and that is a right leaning decrease. And then now we're just going to knit this last stitch. Okay, now you're back down to seven stitches across. Turn that over. Purl that back side. Put your even row. Okay, continue going on. Again, pause if you need to. Okay, and now we're coming to 
row seven. This is similar, same stitches, just a little bit different uh, numbers here. So we're going to knit one, just as before. Slip, slip, knit, that's at SSK. So slip one and then slip two. Put that needle in the front of it. And we're going to knit through that back loop there, decreasing that down. And then we just knit one. Last time we knit three. So just knit one. And now we're going to knit these two together. Just like that. And now we knit one. And our stitch count has gone down again by two. We were at seven and now we're at five stitches. Go ahead and go on this wrong side row another time and purl. Again, pause that video. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're on the ninth row. Very similar still. Numbers changing a little. Knit one, SSK, so slip, slip, knit these together. There we go. And now we don't knit anything in the middle. We're just gonna take these last two stitches, put them together, and do a knit two together. So you should only have three stitches left on your needles. All right, so we're, the tenth row is purl. It's the same as before. You're only got, you only have three of these, and this is the last purl row. So one, two, and three. Turn it over. Okay, this is where we're going to slip one. Okay, so I'm just going to slip it purl wise this way right off the needle and then we're going to knit these two stitches together just as before okay then you have two just two stitches left and now we're going to PSSO that is pass this slipped stitch over this one so we're going to pick this up with our needle and move it over just like a bind off would move that right over or cast off okay we have one stitch and then all we need to do now is just cast it off. So it's really easy. Just pull on it, get that slack in there. Okay, now I'm gonna pull enough to where I can use it to sew, or hopefully enough, I can use it to sew around the edges onto my watermelon. So I'm just gonna take that and cut it. And then I wanna make as many as I need for the size I have. So I want six for the baby, uh, 10 for the child, and 15 for the adult. Go ahead and make as many seeds as you need for yours and feel free to add them if you like. Um, if you want it on both sides, then you're gonna make double the amount that's suggested in the pattern. All right, so finish your seeds and I'll meet you back up to finish this up. All right, so I've made all my seeds, and what you don't see here is if you turn these over, they have all the loose little string on them. <laughs> so I've, I've kind of pocketed them in these little um, concave little areas here and just stuffed them and then uh, put them on here and space them where I want. You could even pin them with some removable stitch markers to see if you like where you've got them. And then once you have them arranged, um, this baby one, um, you may decide you don't want all six of them or, or not. Um, so I'm gonna take them now and I want to, uh, now that I've got them placed where I want, I'm gonna pull out one of these strands here, get my tapestry needle out right here and then I can just uh, start sewing them on the sides here. Okay, so I know that I want this on this row here. So I'm just gonna take my needle since it's already attached and then just go right straight down uh, into this stitch down here. Okay, and then I can come back up and trap the side uh, stitch in here and just kind of come in and out and just sew. All right, so there's not really a special way that I'm doing this. 
I'm just uh, going down into my stitches and then picking up some of the stitches from the knitting below and going around. So I'll go all the way around here and get these all stitched on. Go ahead and do yours and then we'll meet, meet again to sew up the sides. See you soon. Okay, so this last part, you're going to need some scissors and your tapestry needle. And I've got a length of the yarn to match my main body here. And it's a, a few times, uh, two, three times the length of the red that I need. And I'm showing it over here sewn up how I'm going to show you. So see how it has this nice uh, seamless look to it. It actually doesn't have a hard seam on the inside. I'm going to show you how to do that. And any loose tails, you can then uh, sew them up after. Uh, but when we get up to here, what you'll need to do is change your yarn. So I've sewn this up to here, and you'll need to uh, change it to the color here so it's um, masked nicely. And that way you don't have a hard seam inside. So let me show you how do you get that done in uh, matching yarn. So take your yarn out. Go ahead and thread that needle. Okay, and you're going to start at the base and just pull it. I'm going to use these. I'm going to soap that last tip with those, but just to get this started in here and show you. Okay, I'm going to pull this all the way through until I get a tail on the end. Okay, nice long tail. Okay, so let's pull my seam where I can see all these little edges here. So I've got uh, the wrong sides together, okay? So the, the, the right side is on the outsides. And now I'm gonna go into one loop here, okay, which is the very outside loop. And I'm gonna go directly in to, uh, from this angle from the wrong side of this one and pick up this loop on the outside and go pull all these through all that access through and then kind of make a whip stitch so I'm gonna just go back to the same side here so I was on this right panel here or the front and I pick up one of these outside loose stitches and then I go ahead and pick up one of these loose stitches here and do the same from the outside loop so from the front side here to the back uh, or the wrong side of this back panel an outside loop so outside loop to outside loop, you're going to go approach it from the front side of one and to the back side of the other, or wrong side. And as you work your way up, it's going to start being this invisible seam. So let's go continue going up. And you can see how that works up. Now it's gonna look just like this on the other side. So you can continue going up and then what you want is also to finish these here. So these are where the original tails were. You could have woven them in uh, to begin with. Uh, sometimes if they're long enough, I'll use them to start my sewing, uh, but we can go ahead and work them up in the inside and hide them nobody's going to be at the tip of that anyway and so once we get that up in there we can just cut it and now just solve the rest of these a similar way and uh, stitch up that little tail here so when you want to when you finish coming up to uh, say you've done one side you come up to this part here then you can just grab a little scrap piece of the next color when in this case it's white we're going to thread our needle and then we're just going to keep working along picking these up now when we pick these up I'm going to start in the side of this stitch here to kind of keep going with my pattern and pull these two side stitches in together I'm just going to come through it twice just this back one here to kind of lock it in okay so now that I have my stitches in, I want to work with these ridges here. These are garter ridges. So I'm going to pick up one garter ridge here. That's the outside pearl bump. And then I'm going to come over here and pick up this outside pearl bump. 
and come back up and pick up this outside purl bump. Okay. And then I've got uh, this next part here where it starts getting the green in there. So I'm going to leave this tail for now and I'm going to pick up my green and do a similar thing here. And then I can weave these tails in after and get it all locked in. So now I've got this green that I need to pick up and pick up these stitches here. Okay, and then pick up my pearl bump, and then my, my pearl bump here, and my pearl bump here. And I can pick this one up as well. Okay, and so that pulls up that green, and then now I have this next green. And let's get this green attached. Okay. And so now I want to pick up these pearl bumps. So I've got one pearl bump here and one over here. And come to this other side over here, pick that up, and pick up this one. And it makes it real simple just to keep alternating back and forth between these bumps. And then I get to this last part here, which is the top. And then now it is nice and connected. And see there's no hard seam on the inside or on the outside and it's matching that, uh, that garter stitch look to it here. And then I can just come back through the back side of the wrong side and sew in and hide this tail here. And that's the rest of that green one. And then I would just come through and take these and sew them all in. So just repeating this on the other side here. Okay, so I'll meet you back up when I've got it all done and you can see the final result. See you soon. Well, here you are, here is the baby one, and here is the child size and the adult. It is so super soft and squishy, all these big little seeds, <laughs> big little seeds. They're just adorable, I love them, and especially even in this tiny, tiny one, or you can snuggle up as an adult. So it is precious and delicious. I hope you enjoyed making your watermelon wedge knit snuggle sack by Yarnspirations.com. On behalf of Yarnspirations and Good Knit Kisses, I'm your host, Kristen, wishing you happy knitting. Bye-bye.